a, a byproduct of muscle metabolism. It doesn't really have a function itself in the body. Um, and so it's really a, a waste product really of, of muscle turnover um, that is um, excreted in the, in the kidneys. It doesn't really have a function in itself. We don't really know whether creatinine itself causes any symptoms at all. Uh, if creatinine is raised because of uh, kidney impairment, then when the uh, kidney impairment is very severe, then a patient may experience symptoms of, of renal failure, which would include uh, feeling very tired, much more tired than you might expect, uh, might include decreased appetite and, and then some consequent weight loss, um, breathlessness, potentially swelling of the legs or the body with fluid retention, um, but mostly it's fatigue that people notice. But that being said, that's not due to creatinine. That's almost certainly due to middle molecules or so-called waste products that build up in the body in kidney failure. So creatinine itself doesn't cause any of these symptoms. And the other thing to say is that uh, with relatively mild kidney failure, actually with moderate kidney impairment, um, the, you're very unlikely to have symptoms attributable to this. So if, if you have a uh, an EGFR of 60, for example, you might say, oh, this is slightly lower than normal. It would be very unusual or, or almost impossible for fatigue to be due to your kidney problem in that range. If your kidney function is 30 or less, 30% or less, then you may have symptoms attributable to that. But higher than that, that would be unusual. Raised creatinine level um, can reflect uh, in, impaired kidney function. And if kidney function gets, gets worse and worse and worse and worse, then this clearly can be dangerous and, and can be life-threatening in the extreme. Um, the raised creatinine can also be due to other reasons, such as a high protein meal uh, or due to ingestion of creatine or protein supplements, um, due to a combination of dehydration and certain blood pressure tablets. And these sorts of things can raise the creatinine um, without necessarily uh, meaning a sustained permanent loss of kidney function. It may well just be an imbalance of supply and demand, if you like, of creatinine in the body that the kidney hasn't had a chance to get rid of yet. And then with a restoration of a sort of a normal balanced diet, for example, the, the creatinine may lower. That doesn't mean to say the kidneys weren't working in the first place, it just means they're working a little bit less hard. And people often ask, is a high protein diet bad for you? And the answer is almost certainly no, uh, provided your health is otherwise good. These are the sorts of things that we talk about in the kidney consultation. Um, there are fairly um, conventional uh, approaches to uh, referral uh, in the NHS uh, and in the private sector. Uh, and so if the creatinine is definitely going up, so if you've had two or three readings and it's increasing, then and it's increasing by let's say more than 20%, then you're definitely going to want to get some advice about that. If you've had a one-off that's gone up and then gone down again, then unless you have significant health concern, that's probably okay. As I said before, it can fluctuate with diet and hydration status, these sorts of things. So if there's a percentage increase in creatinine, that could trigger a consultation. And if the absolute level is high, that reflects an EGFR, that's the calculation based on the inverse of the creatinine. So the, as the creatinine goes up, the EGFR necessarily goes down. And if the EGFR is less than 60, uh, then you may wish to see a doctor about that. Raised creatinine isn't treated in itself, uh, but whereas uh, an in, a, a reduced kidney function can be addressed. And the usual way to address this is to ensure that uh, lifestyle measures are appropriate. So this usually revolves around taking exercise, not smoking, uh, reducing alcohol intake, eating a balanced diet, uh, and, and then making sure that you're doing everything you can to reduce your blood pressure to a healthy level, in, including reducing salt. And after that, it's uh, really a question of finding out what the underlying cause is. So if you have a kidney condition, which uh, is, the, is causing a raised creatinine. Let's just say, for example, you have an autoimmune disease such as lupus, then that disease clearly needs to be treated. And then one would hope that the creatinine and, or, and kidney function improves. If you um, 
have a condition that can't really be treated uh, specifically. So um, some, for example, if you have di diabetic kidney disease, then you can improve blood pressure and you can improve diabetic control and all the lifestyle me measures that I've talked about. But after that, sometimes after many years, the kidneys get worse anyway. If that happens, then with careful monitoring, then uh, uh, when the percentage kidney function reduces below 20, then options regarding what we call renal replacement therapy are discussed. And that includes dialysis and transplantation. So uh, whilst uh, dialysis uh, replaces the kidney function, it doesn't treat kidney dysfunction. It doesn't make the kidneys better. It keeps you alive whilst the kidneys don't work. For most people, uh, a transplant is better than dialysis, although some people who are more unwell or are frail or older, a transplant may not be suitable for them. So both of these treatments uh, can lower, can treat the raised creatinine, but really what they're treating is kidney failure.